Hi everyone, welcome to week one of Term 2 for Kids Church. Uh, really glad that you could be joining us today and we are starting our new theme and uh, I'm going to let Alison tell you all about that in just a moment. But before we do get started, we're going to start the way that we normally do at Kids Church and that is to uh, collect our money and to pray for the different things that you ask. Well, um, we can't at the moment have you putting your money in our tins. I've got them here just to remind you what they're like. This one, I've got them all here. I've got all of our tins. I brought them all home with me so that I could remind you that to put your money into the little boxes that I dropped off for you before Easter. I hope that you've been remembering to do that. And when we get back together, we're going to be able to put them all in here and count how much we have to be able to give to our missionaries, which will be really great because you remember that these are we're collecting this money for our link missionaries to send to support them, to show that we're caring for them and thinking about them. The other thing that we do uh, at first at Kids Church is to pray. And we pray for our link missionaries. I know that you're all very good at remembering to do that. And we pray for other things. We pray for our friends who aren't with us. And at the moment, that's everyone. We're all doing things separately in our homes, uh, but we can still pray for each other, which is really great. No matter where we are or what time it is, we can be praying for each other. And we know that God always hears our prayers and always answers our prayers, so that's really great too. Uh, but if you would like to send in some prayer points, some things that we can be praying for, you are more than welcome to do that. If you send a message, uh, you can send that to me on my email address, on my phone number if your mum or dad have them, or you can send a message to the church uh, email address, which is office at rhac.org.au. So don't forget that you can do that, and uh, we'll pray for you. And... So I'm going to spend some time praying now. I'd love it if you could join with me. So please close your eyes and put your hands together like we do so we don't get distracted and we don't look around at other things. And I'm going to pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that although we can't be together at Kids Church today, we know that you are with each one of us and that we are still learning about you, we are still praying to you, talking to you, and we uh, can do this together, even though we're in separate places, and so we really thank you for that. We thank you that we're starting a new term, a new theme at Kids Church, and we pray that it will be a really good term of where we can be encouraged and we can learn about you. And we thank you that we have this technology that we can still be connecting in this way. Heavenly Father, we pray for our link missionaries, for the Lovells and Southertons and the Rose and the Slacks. And we ask, Heavenly Father, that you would be looking after those families. We pray that you would keep them safe and healthy. And we ask, Lord, that you would be helping them to still share the good news about Jesus to the people around them. We especially pray for our friends who have gone back to school this week, both our Link Missionary friends and our friends at Kids Church. We thank you that school has still been able to go, even though it's online. And we pray, Lord, that you would help all the kids to learn well and to get used to this type of learning until they're allowed to go back to school. We thank you for all the hard work that teachers are doing to make sure that kids can still be learning and developing and growing even though they're not at school. And we pray that you would keep them safe as well. Father, we uh, can see that the virus has been just so terrible around the whole world. And we pray, Lord, that you would bring an end to that virus, that the scientists and others who are working uh, on a cure would be able to find one quickly and that those scientists who are working on um, a way of stopping people from getting the virus would be able to um, get that finished quickly as well so we can get vaccinated for that 
we particularly think of parts of the world which don't have all the medical uh, experience and supplies that we have here and we pray Lord that you won't let the virus spread there and uh, we thank you again that we can live here in Australia we thank you that you are always looking after us and we pray Heavenly Father that you would um, that you would help us to keep our eyes fixed on you to remember Jesus and to put him first in our lives. And we pray it in his name. Amen. Well, thanks for joining with me for praying. I'm going to hand over to Alison now, and I'll see you back again at the end. Okay, bye for now. Hi, everyone. I'm Alison, and I'm one of the leaders at Rousey Anglican Church Kids Church. And I normally look after years three to five, um, but while we can't meet together, um, I'm coming to you from my home. And uh, if you've just joined us today for the first time, welcome. It's really good that you could join us and we're going to have a bit of fun today as uh, we look at God's Word, the Bible. So um, today I have, as you can see, my friend Gus. Say hi, Gus. Hi. Gus is just one of my mates that, ha that I hang around with. And how's it going with the, all the social distancing and things? Oh, okay. Yeah, you do, you're doing okay? Yeah. So what, what about the isolation? Isn't that driving you mad? No, not really. How come it isn't driving you mad? That's it's driving me mad, I can tell you now. It, it, you're, not, you're not getting bored or anything? No. Yeah. How come? Oh, it's just like detention, really. Oh, detention. I wouldn't know about detention. Oh, I would. Yeah, well, okay, so have you been doing some Zoom meetings and things with school? Yeah. So, how's that going? Oh, okay. So, with your teacher? Yeah, my teacher. Oh, okay, and, and, and how's it all going? Okay. Sometimes I just nerd my mouth and don't say anything. Like this. What's the point of that? My teacher thinks she's going deaf. Oh, that's really unkind, is it? Yes, that's really unkind. I don't think you should be doing that at all. No? no, I don't think you should be doing that. Well, actually, during social isolation, I've been creating. Yeah, yeah, I have. I've been making things. I've been making lots of things. Like what? Well, I've been making this. I'm going to turn it round so the boys and girls can see it. Have a close look. Look at it. Isn't it gorgeous? What do you think? Nice plate. Nice plate? I'm not talking about the plate. I'm talking about what's on the plate. Ah, oh, still a nice plate. But, but, but it's the creature, it's the creation that's on the plate that's important. I still like the plate. Oh, but uh, what's wrong with my creature? I don't like it. What do you mean you don't like it? It's weird. It's weird? It's not weird. It's lovely. I'm really pleased with it. I love it. I think it's really good. Yeah, yeah I do. I think it's really good. I'm really, really happy with it. I created it and I'm really happy with it. I could do better. I'm not asking you to do better. I'm not asking you to make one. No, I'm not. I love mine, it's really good. And look, it has a tail, yeah. and it has legs, yeah. and it has eyes, yeah. and look at all the lovely colours I've used. Oh, yuck. What do you mean, oh, yuck? They are girly. They are girly. Well, I'm a girl, and I love the colours, and I love the whole thing. And I don't know why you don't like it. It looks like one of the kids in my class. Oh, does it? It looks like one of the kids in your class. Well, you know what, Gus? Um, today we're going to be learning about someone else who created things. Yeah? Yeah, we're going to be learning about someone who created amazing things. So I'm just going to be telling the kids about what happened that on that on at that time and also about what's happening this term. Yeah? 
Yeah, I am. So this term, girls and boys, we're going to be looking at God's big plan and we're going to be looking at the Bible from beginning to end. Right? Yeah, Bible from beginning to end. Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. That's a very big book. I know it's a very big book. It is a big book. And I look at everything in the whole Bible. We're going to be looking at where, what, how it started and how it ends and how it is all God's big plan for rescue, for rescuing us. Wow. Yep, so that's what we're going to be doing this term. So we're going to be looking forward to talking all about that and, and finding out what God's big rescue plan is for us. Oh, that's great. So are you going to say goodbye now? And I'm going to go over to the other room and I'm going to be talking to the boys and girls about that. Okay? Yeah. So see, say see you later. See you later. And we'll see you maybe next time. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye, boys and girls. Well, girls and boys, now that Gus is gone, he is a bit naughty, isn't he? Well, now he's gone, uh, we're going to tell the story. And I've invited a special guest today to come and help us to tell the story. So uh, I'm just going to leave you for just a moment. Just talk amongst yourselves for just a moment while I go and find our guest. All right, while Alison's going to get her special guest, I've just asked Trish, Trish to read us the Bible passage that we're going to be looking at today. So just we'll squeeze that in before Alison gets back with her special guest. Hi. Hi everyone, it's Trish from church. I hope you've had a great week. Just um, want to tell you guys how much we miss seeing you at church. Um, we miss your lovely, happy faces, um, but looking forward to seeing you again very soon face to face. But in the meantime, we're going to do some reading from the Bible. We're going to read Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. So that's the first book of the Bible. And then after that, we're going to look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 7 to 23. So I'll give you just a minute to look it up. So let's start with Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That was nice and easy, wasn't it? Okay. And now the second part, Genesis 2, verse 7 to 23. The Lord God took a handful of soil and made a man. God breathed life into the man and the man started breathing. The Lord made a garden in a place called Eden, which was in the east, and he put the man there. The Lord placed all kinds of beautiful trees and fruit trees in the garden. Two other trees were in the middle of the garden. One of the trees gave life. The other gave the power to know the difference between right and wrong. From Eden, a river flowed out to water the garden and then it divided into four rivers. The first one is the Pishon River that flows through the land of Havilah, where pure gold, rare perfumes and precious stones are found. The second is Gihon River that winds through Ethiopia. The Tigris River that flows east of Assyria is the third and the fourth is the Euphrates River. The Lord God put the man in the Garden of Eden to take care of it and to look after it. But the Lord told him, you may eat fruit from any tree in the garden, except the one that has the power to let you know the difference between right and wrong. If you eat any fruit from that tree, you will die before the day is over. The Lord God said, it isn't good for the man to live alone. I need to make a suitable partner for him. So the Lord took some soil and made animals and birds. He brought them to the man to see what names he would give each of them. Then the man named the tame animals and the birds and the wild animals. And that's how they got their names. 
None of these was the right kind of partner for the man. So the Lord God made him fall into a deep sleep and he took out one of the man's ribs. And then after closing the man's side, the Lord made a woman out of the rib. The Lord God brought her to the man and the man exclaimed, Here is someone like me. She is part of my body, my own flesh and bones. She came from me, a man. So I will name her woman. Everybody, this is Sketch. Say hello to Sketch. There's something you need to know about Sketch. Sketch never talks. Sketch can only draw. So what will we get Sketch to draw for us today? I think he's got something in mind. What's he got over here? There's a board. What's he going to do with the board? He's going to draw. Before God made the world, there was nothing. No houses, no people, no animals, no sun or sky or land. It was just dark and empty. But God was there and God decided to make something wonderful. God said, let there be light. And the light shone all around. God called the light day. And he divided the darkness from the light to make what he called night. God saw that it was good. And that's what God did on the first day. The next day, God said, let there be sky. And the water be made separate from each other. Now there was water below the sky. And a sky that arched over the water. And that's what God did on the second day. On the third day, God spoke, and the waters gathered together to make rivers, lakes, and oceans. Once the water was moved around, dry land appeared. Now there were mountains and hills, deep canyons, and dry deserts. God had shaped a beautiful world, but God was not finished yet. There was still not anything on the earth that was alive. So God said, let there be all sorts of grasses and plants and trees. Grass sprang up, flowers bloomed, red, yellow, pink and purple, every colour you can think of. Trees of all shapes and sizes grew. Berry bushes and pumpkin vines grew beautiful fruit and bright orange pumpkins. God looked at all the world that he, work that he had done and he saw that it was good. The next day, God made a special bright light that put it in the sky to shine during the day. We call that light the sun. And he made the moon and the stars to shine at night. God did a lot of things on the fourth day. 
On the fifth day, God filled the water and the sky with living creatures. He put fish and sharks, octopuses and whales in the ocean. Birds flew through the sky. Some birds were tiny. Some birds were big. And they were every colour you could think of. This was the fifth day. On the sixth day, God made land animals. He made little mice and middle-sized ant eaters and laughing hyenas and big polar bears and water buffalo and even dinosaurs. Now the world was a hopping, buzzing, galloping, wriggling, lively place. This was all very wonderful, but the day was not over yet. The next thing God did was even more amazing. He created man. God called the man Adam. Later, God made a woman called Eve. God made them different from the animals. They could think and make things. They could talk to each other and to God. And God loved them. They were his special friends. Adam and Eve lived in a beautiful garden that was full of the wonderful things God had made. This was on the sixth day. And when he had, when he had finished, God looked at the whole world he had created. It was exactly as he wanted it to be. He looked around at everything he had made and he said, this is good. Thank you, Sketch. Wow, how talented is Sketch? I wish I could draw like that. Well, we might have another visit from Sketch another time, but right now what we would normally be doing in this term's work is making a piece of craft work. And unfortunately, although we've ordered some things to do the craft, uh, they haven't arrived yet because as you know, this is not normal times and the postage is a little bit slow. So hopefully, we're hoping they'll be here for next week. But here's a little clue of something that we're going to be doing. We're going to be making something that adds up all across the term. And here's a little hint of what it's going to look like. So next week, there'll be more on that. And um, I'm going to hand over now to Natalie. Okay. Well, thanks, Alison, for all of that and for helping us to learn about uh, what God did in creation. It's pretty amazing. There are lots of good things that we can be thankful for. And I'm going to hand over to Mitchell now, and he's going to lead us in prayer. So here's Mitchell. Hi everyone, it's Mitchell here. We're gonna to come to a time of prayer. But before we do that, I want you to think about our world. We live in an amazing world, and there are so many things to be thankful for. I wonder what part of God's creation you're especially thankful for. I'm particularly thankful for clouds. I love clouds. I love looking at them. I wonder what you're thankful for. When we come to the part of our prayer that I'm about to pray, uh, where we say what we're thankful for, I'm going to pause so that you have a chance to say either out loud or in your head what it is that you are thankful to God for making. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the world that you have made. You are amazing and you are so creative. There is no one as creative as you. Today, we are especially thankful for... Lord, please help us to remember 
that it's you who made the beautiful creation that's around us. Please help us to appreciate its beauty. Amen. Thanks for praying for us, Mitchell. Now, everyone, as Alison mentioned, there is going to be a craft that will go along each week with the talks that we're doing. And unfortunately, it hasn't arrived in time for this week. But don't worry, I'm going to drop them into you throughout the week. I hope that they, everything will arrive and um, we'll drop them into you throughout the week. And next week, we'll go over the craft that should have been done uh, today. And so you'll be able to all catch up and uh, make sure that everyone is up to the same part. There's nothing to do for you online today because all of that uh, will be sync, will be dropped off to you instead of online for this term. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of work, but I'm sure that you'll be able to work together uh, as a family, as if you've got more than one child in kids' church, you'll be able to work together to get this looking uh, amazing. And Alice and I are also going to be doing the craft. And I can't wait till we get back together when you're going to bring in your craft and show us what you've been doing. I really hope, though, that you will take some photographs or you'll get ask mum or dad to take some photographs and that you'll send them to us. That would be great. Now, mum and dad have my email address. If not, you can just send it to the church email address, which is office at rhac.org.au and then I'll be showing them or Alison will show them in the weeks to come which will be great we'll be able to share the pictures that everyone's been doing don't forget if you have any questions please send them in uh, if you've got any photos of you doing things or watching kids church we'd love to see them as well um, and I do hope that you have a great week uh, enjoy uh, being back at school again for another week and um, I hoped that maybe I'll even get to see some of you when I drop your packs in. Uh, I do hope that you um, are enjoying your time at home with your mum and dad and you're not getting too sick of it yet because it does get a bit hard being at home so much but um, we'll get there. Uh, so it's been good to spend this time with you and we'll see you uh, next week. Bye everyone.